Hi everyone, it's Miss Christy from East Pennsboro Library and tonight I am going to show you how to make a paper pumpkin for Thanksgiving for decoration. Here is a different style that uses a little bit thicker glittery paper and here is one that I made out of ribbons. Once you learn how to make it out of paper, you can tweak your project to make it any way you'd like. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. And when you're all finished, that's what you're going to have as your final project. And let's take a look at the materials that we are gonna need for this project. Two sheets of construction paper, or cardstock or fancy stock paper. And when I say fancy paper, I'm talking about this paper is a little bit thicker and it's a little bit glittery. They make special paper for scrapbooking projects. You might want to try some of that. If you don't, if you have a smaller sheet of paper than what we're going to use for this project, you'll just have a smaller pumpkin. So you need two sheets of construction cardstock or fancy stock paper scissors, glue or clear tape, pipe cleaners, a roller, and a hole punch. Now, this is going to take a little bit more time because this is not a hard project, but it's a little intricate and you have to, there's a lot of steps involved. So I'm going to slowly go over the direction page a little bit at a time, take the direction page down, and actually do what I had just told you about and then go back to the direction page. So this is gonna be a little different than my other videos where I usually give you all the directions first. All right, so we have our materials all together and we're gonna to start to make our pumpkin. And here's the first thing that we are gonna do. The first thing that we're gonna do is take our paper and fold it landscape or what we used to call when I was in school, hamburger style before we had cell phones that went landscape or portrait, you're gonna fold the paper once from the top to the bottom. Can, holding the paper and keeping the paper folded in half, you're gonna fold it again from the top to the bottom. And then you're gonna do that one more time. So three times from top to bottom. You're gonna open the paper and it should look like a fan or an accordion. And you're gonna cut eight strips using the fold lines to guide you because when you fold it, it's gonna give you eight equal size strips. Then you're gonna fold the second sheet in half from the top to the bottom, cut on the fold line. You're gonna lay half of it to the side because half of it is going to give us four more strips because we need a total of 12 for the project. And the other half, we're gonna use a piece of to make our stem. So let's see here, we're gonna make our four additional strips and I'm gonna pause there for a minute and I'm gonna take you through those steps and then we'll go back and see what we're gonna do with these strips once we get them done. So holding our paper, hamburger style, or like I said, landscape style nowadays, we're gonna fold it from top to bottom. You wanna be very sure that you get your line exactly even because, so you wanna take your time because you want to make sure that the strips end up being even. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it one more time from top to bottom. And then a third and final time from top to bottom. Okay, and then you're going to open this up. You are going to have eight equal size strips. I'm going to lay this to the side. I'm going to take my second sheet of paper. Same thing, you're going to fold from top to bottom. Only this time, you're going to actually cut this paper in half and lay half of it to the side. And you have a fold line there to cut on. That's why I love these projects where you can make these great fold lines so you don't have to worry about measuring stuff. So I'm gonna lay half of it to the side. I'm gonna take this half, fold it over once from top to bottom. 
making sure I have that all lined up. And then I'm going to do that one more time. And open that up and it's going to give me four. Oh no. Yep. It's going to give me four more equal size strips that match the eight I already have. Now I'm going to cut these all apart, starting with my eight, and I'm just going to cut right along that fold line. Makes it really easy until I have all 12 of my strips cut out. All right, so I have my 12 equal strips. Let's take a look at the directions again and see what we are going to do next. Our next step is going to be to take two strips and glue them together at one end to create a long paper strip. And then you're gonna repeat that step again with two more strips. So you need four strips, one, two, three, four, and you're gonna glue those together to make two long strips. After you make two long strips, you're going to glue the two long strips together in the middle to form a cross. And I'm gonna show you how to make, how to glue the strips together. And I'm gonna make the cross up here so that I can tape it so that you'll be able to see exactly how I'm building the pumpkin. So let's take a look at how we're gonna glue these. You're gonna take two strips and you're gonna glue them together like this. I'd say just, you know, about maybe three quarters of an inch in. So I'll take those, take my glue stick here, and I'll just glue those, that end together like this. Now I've got one very long paper strip. And I'm going to do that with two additional, whoops, with two additional strips make another long paper strip. So now I have two and I'm going to glue these together in the center to make a cross. All right, so we have our cross made by gluing it in the center. And like I said, I've got mine hung up here so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Let me move it up just a little bit higher. And let's take a look back at our direction sheet at the next steps. Now, this is where things get a little hairy, so you might wanna pay attention. So we've got everything glued together to form the cross. Now we're gonna take four paper strips and we're gonna glue them at the one o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock and five o'clock position. And we're going to do that like this by gluing them in the center. So what I'm going to do first is finish the directions out with you and then I'll go back and I'll actually do this. Then we're going to go ahead and glue four more strips or the remaining four strips at the, imagine that, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock position. After we get all of the strips glued on. We'll have something that looks like a sunshine with rays coming out from the ends. We're gonna take a hole punch and we're gonna punch a hole about probably three quarters of an inch in from each end. So let me show you how, what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna take my first strip and I like to glue in the center of it like this, put a little glue there, and I'm going to glue this strip at the one o'clock position. Now, things are probably going to lean forward a little bit in mine. Let me see if I can tape that up so that it's a little easier for us to look at. There we go. So we've got the one o'clock position. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some more glue in the center and glue another one at the two o'clock position. Another one at the five o'clock position. I'm sorry, the four o'clock position. Whoops, I lost track of time. Uh -huh. 
That's because it's flying. One at the five o'clock position. And then we've got six o'clock already up there and seven. The eight o'clock position. And then you got nine o'clock because that was part of the center. And then 10 and 11. And everything is glued together to make a big star or sunshine. And this is what it should look like after you've done all the gluing of what I could call spokes from a wheel, the rays on the sun, anything you'd like to call them. So then the next step is to take a single hole punch and punch a hole in the end of each of them. And I find that it's easiest to start at the top. So I'm gonna come in here about three quarters of an inch and punch a hole like that. And I'm gonna do that to every single one of the rays that are coming out. Now, let me tell you, what kind of material you use for the project is gonna help to determine where you punch that hole. This is a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna punch in further. When I made this pumpkin, this is a little bit heavier, so I was able to have my hole out here a little more. You don't want it too close to the edge with thinner paper because when you go to put it on the stem, that will tear. So you're gonna continue and do the punch a hole in the end of each of the spokes of the sun. All right, so we've got all of our rays. We've got a hole in the end of each. Let's see what our next step is going to be. We have to make the stem next. Now, this is a little tricky and you might mess it up the first time, but that's okay because you have this much paper to work with. What you're going to do is cut using this sheet, you're going to cut out a rectangle approximately two inches by three and a half inches. Holding that rectangle landscape form, you're going to roll it into the form of a funnel. And you, because you want to make sure that one end is small and tight enough that it can fit through one of the holes that you punched in the spoke. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we will go back to these directions. So I'm going to take this and measure out two by three and a half inches length. Let's see here. You know what? My pen is in the other room. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut it right at about two inches. I normally would draw a line, but I don't want to pause you. And then my length is going to be about three and a half inches, which is about right here. So, and like I said, it's approximate. Now I've got my rectangle. So I have to full roll this so that it looks like a funnel. I start in one corner, very small, and I continue to roll the paper like this until one end of it is pretty small and tight and will fit down into the hole that we made in the spoke. And one is, end is a little bit bigger. All right. So we did that. Now, the next thing I want to do is just tape around the bottom of it to keep it together. Plus it'll make it so much easier to feed through the holes in the spokes. Let's take a look at our next direction. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to form the stem of the pumpkin. We're going to lift the one o'clock strip and insert this through the strip and push the strip firmly into place. And I'll show you what that looks like, looks like in a minute. And then we're going to lift the two o'clock strip and 
put it underneath the one o'clock strip. You're going to kind of pull that one o'clock strip with stem in over the two o'clock. And you're going to continue to do that all the way around the clock. And then as you do that, you'll start to see your pumpkin form. All right. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. I'm going to take this down. All right, there we go. And I'm going to show you now. First thing I need to do is I have to make sure I can find where my one o'clock strip is because you've glued them all together and it gets confusing. If you look on the back, the strip that is on the bottom of the back will be your 12 o'clock and your six o'clock strip. So this is your one o'clock strip. I'm going to take my stem piece, make sure that this is rolled pretty tight on the bottom. And I'm going to put it through the top of the one o'clock piece, right through the hole like that. Until it kind of won't go any farther. And then if I pop that out a little bit, stays together. Next step, I'm going to take the two o'clock strip, the strip right next to the one o'clock strip. And I'm going to take, pull the one o'clock strip over the top of the two o'clock strip. Before I do that, I'm going to put glue around the hole on the two o'clock strip. Put some glue around that hole. Now I got, here's the two o'clock strip, the top of it. I'm going to take this one o'clock strip, pull it over the two o'clock strip, put the stem through the hole like this. And you have to do this very carefully so that you don't tear the paper and push them together. And look, you can almost start to see the side of the pumpkin form. And then I'm going to take the three o'clock strip and do the same thing. Go ahead and put my glue right at the hole. I'm going to take the one o'clock and the two o'clock strip and pull them over the three o'clock strip. And push down. And as you can see, we're starting to form a pumpkin. I'm going to do the same thing with the four o'clock strip right here. Let me see if I can get this light a little better for you. The four o'clock strip right here. Put some glue around that hole. Pull it under the one, two, and three. Put that stem through it. And push down with them all together so that they get glued in place. And you can start to see the pumpkin form. You're going to continue this until you're back to the 12 o'clock. And then you're going to stop and you'll have the pumpkin form. All right, so we got the pumpkin almost completely formed. Still have three more strips to glue. I'm going to finish that out by putting glue right at the hole in the strip and pushing the stem through and pulling it up underneath the other ones. Next one, same thing. This is my 11 o'clock, I'm almost done. Put, put it around there. Got my pumpkin here, the stem is in there. I'm gonna push everything on top of that one. Push it through, hold it tight. And then I'm at my last strip. Now, if you notice, a few of my strips are overlapping right here, that's okay. Because we will fix that up. I'm gonna take everything over the top of my last strip and pull everything together. Now, this part is kind of the fun part. Now you can sort of move them around, pull the sides of the pumpkin apart until it forms the shape of the pumpkin that you would like. You can bend them. You might need to slide some of them apart and you can move them around. These pumpkins make great table decorations. And we're going to look at some other things this week that make great table decorations too. Don't be discouraged if the first one you make doesn't turn out all that great. Let me share something with you. This was the first one I made. See all those holes? This was my practice one. It didn't turn out that good and it got kind of smashed. Then I made this one and it looks a little bit better. I got a little better at it. And then I found this and I used my glue gun and I made 
one out of ribbon, but I had to practice first, so don't get discouraged. When you're done with your paper pumpkins, I'd love for you to share your project with me. And let me show you how to do that. You can email pictures of your projects to kscrignoli at ccpa.net. Let me share with you some pictures of my project as I learned how to do this and worked through it. Here are all three of the pumpkins. Here's my first one I made, my second one, and my final one. And here is a picture of what I'm working on for my centerpiece for Thanksgiving dinner, the decoupage base that we made last month along with a ribbon pumpkin. And then I'm gonna make something else this week to go on the other side. Thank you so much for joining us to learn how to make paper pumpkins. And I encourage you to use our contactless pickup service. If you'd like to get some library books, you can check out that information on our Facebook page or on our website. Have a great week, everyone.